Welcome to the third day of competition for the Southwest Regional. We are bringing the action to you live from the Utah Olympic Oval in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm Justin Judkins alongside games veteran Josh Everett. This is the team competition, the third and final heat for event number six. Josh, today we find out who is going to qualify for the CrossFit Games this summer. Now, obviously, Pax Pack has a solid lead, but tell us, what about slots numbers two and three, and who is in striking distance? Well, we have a tie for second. Front Range CrossFit and Ute All-Stars both have 23 points, so it's going to be an interesting battle to see who's going to get second and third. And then CrossFit Utah Valley is sitting in fourth with 41 points, and Red Rocks CrossFit is in uh, fifth place with 43 points. Both of those teams have an outside shot, not a good shot, but an outside shot if they do well in these last two events to move up to maybe that third slot and get a, get a spot at the games. So two workouts left, still plenty of points available. There's no cutoff. So how does that increase people's chances to make it to the games this summer? Well, you know, with all the teams still competing and, and no cutoff, there's still that chance if you have a really bad event uh, some of these teams at the top, they can accumulate a lot of points. So that leaves the window of opportunity open for anybody. It's still a wide open uh, game. Sometimes when you have cuts early in the competition, there's just not that point spread to make up points at the end of the, uh, the competition. Here, it's still an open game now, albeit it's a, a slim chance for some of those teams in the middle to the bottom of the pack, but they still have a shot. But besides that, you come here, you want to place well, you want to do well, you want to compete at every event. For these athletes going here, it's only two athletes competing, representing the team. This is their main event. This is the one that their teammates deem, their coaches deem, was their event that they should shine on. They want to do well for their team here. Now, when that leaderboard came up on the screen, you probably noticed in lane five and lane six, the name Ute. That was not a typo. Ute CrossFit has two teams that are right at the top of the leaderboard, and they're both in a great position to make it to the CrossFit Games this summer. So that speaks to Tommy Hackenbrook's uh, gym that he has going there, the programming that they're doing, and obviously they're doing something right. So event number six is underway for the team competition. This is how the workout goes. Four times the teams will complete 100 double-unders. The man's going to start first. He's got to do 50. Then the female starts in. She's got to do 50. They slide underneath that wall and then they will complete 50 handstand push-ups. But the trick is, nobody gets a break in this workout. So while one partner's doing handstand push-ups, the other one is holding the handstand. Then, once they've completed 50 as a team, they advance to the pull-up rig, where it's kind of the same setup. They have to complete 50 toes-to-bar, but one partner can be doing the toes-to-bar, the other one has to be hanging from the bar. 50 shoulder to overhead is the next movement that they will advance to. It's an axle bar. The man is going to be going shoulder to overhead with 160 pounds, the female 100 pounds. While one is working, the other one is holding their weight in the front rack position. Then both partners will put that weight in the front rack position in front of their neck on their shoulders, and they will do walking lunges down the field. The man has to go first. The female cannot pass the male and they're gonna go 90 feet until they get to the finish line. And Justin, the, the reps here really aren't a lot, only 50 total between each uh, each teammate. Doesn't matter who does the work, somebody can do 40, somebody can do 10, but you don't get any rest. You're holding a handstand, which is very difficult. It's very taxing, especially on the shoulders that are trying to drive you up when you get to the handstand push-up. So not a lot of reps, but there's also no rest for the competitors here, unless they both rest at the same time, in which case they're not working their way towards the end of the workout. Now we're seeing some do different techniques. Uh, most of the athletes right now are using a kip. Explain the difference between a kip and a strict handstand push-up. So with the kip that you're seeing here, the athletes drive their hips and legs up to create a little bit of momentum and their arms finish out. They ride that wave from the kick of the, of the hips and finish it out with the press. And Hacks Pack, Ute CrossFit already has, their judge has their hand up so they are closing in on the final reps of their 50 handstand push-ups. They will be the first ones to finish the handstand push-ups and go to the toes to bar. So lane two, same thing, and that is CrossFit Verve on the left of your screen. This is Hacks Pack, Ute CrossFit. 
Taylor Richards Lindsay pounding out the toes to bar. Man, you got to dig down deep, pull it out, and just start going. Yeah, I keep no being told breaks. by uh, you know, people from the stands that have been to multiple regionals that this is by far their favorite event to, to watch here. Uh, so it's very compelling at the end as they, they get onto those uh, lunges. And Hacks Pat uh, is working on their 50 shoulder to overhead. When one partner gets too tired, they've got to set that bar down. So, Josh, how important is yeah. communication and how do you know when to stop? Communication is key. They're facing each other. They can look. They give a little wink or a nod. They, they know. But then the other component here is holding that rack position. If you're really flexible in the lats, wrists, and shoulders, it's actually pretty easy. If you're not flexible in this position, it's torture. It's balance. Flexibility pays in the strength of power for sport. And how important is it to know when to switch? Because I would assume, you know, you can dig down, get a couple of steps, but at what cost? Yeah, you know what? You don't want to, you never want to burn out. It's always better to take a break, a rep or two early than a, than a rep or two late. That better late can definitely cost you for the rest of the workout. And I know these guys, these team members, have not done as much work as the individual competition. Uh, but still, the workouts that they've done over the last two days have to have taken its toll. So what are their bodies feeling like at this point? You know, if they should be a little individual competition, uh, they should be going into this pretty pretty fresh. Hacks Pack, you CrossFit. Out of five events so far, they have set a record an event record in four of those events. We'll see if they can do it today. The record on this event was set by CrossFit New England. It's regional, seven minutes and 33 seconds. I don't think they're gonna do it because we're at six minutes and 45 seconds yeah, of this workout right now. They're very near the end of their presses, but they'll have to speed down the uh, the track here. Literally, this is a, a speed skating ice uh, ice track that they're, uh, the floor's on. They'd have to speed down the track on those lunges, but they are to the lunges, but they'd have to lunge very, very fast to, uh, to beat this event record. And so, he looks like he's yeah, in a little bit of distress. Say, that look kind of says it all, but they have established a lead. They did establish a lead early on in the workout. Throughout the workout, they were the first ones done with the with the uh, toes to bar, first ones done now with the shoulder to overhead, with their barbells, that axle bar adds a different kind of component. What kind of difference does it make as they're doing these lunges, Josh? I know it's huge. That two inch diameter bar doesn't sit in that little groove on your shoulder uh, as neatly as the standard barbell. So they've really got to work to keep their elbows up, to keep that bar in place, to see that bar just roll forward. As that bar comes forward at all, it's going to be done over. You're going to have to drop it and, and reset. So really being focused and keeping those arms up are going to help quite a bit. And CrossFit Burr, they're just hands up, so they're closing in on the final reps of their 50 shoulder overhead. You see them communicating, hey, I need a little bit more time. Give me a second here. Josh, from the shoulder to overhead, they just look brutal. But so does this walking lunge with this weight. Which of the two movements or exercises is the hardest? But the walking lunge is, is taxing overhead. You can either do it or you can. The walking lunge is all about guts. You can take another step with this weight, but you're feeling fatigue in the shoulders from the double unders, from the handstand push-ups, from the shoulder to overhead. The hard part about this lunge is actually holding that bar up on the shoulders, not necessarily the work that the legs are doing. So the shoulders are really fatigued at this point. And now you see Hacks Pack closing in on the final 10 meters of this walking lunge. It's 90 feet that they have to go. The judges are keeping of where they uh, don't meet the criteria yeah, of the movement. Keeping them honest. If you yep. shuffle your feet or take a little false step there, that's no go. Making up, uh, making up step individually. That lead foot has to stay planted until the other foot uh, lands. It looks like they're going to finish in first So place the male here. member will cross first. And then Taylor Richards Lindsay will step on the red mat. Unofficial time, nine minutes, 12 seconds. And man, they have now won their sixth event out of six events. This is the most dominating performance I've ever seen from a, from a team competition. I mean, they. Um, I would be uh, shaking in my boots if I was another team in another region watching what they're doing here. Now, uh, this they is, haven't even been pushed. Imagine yeah. what they can do if they, they're being pushed. Exactly. And this is our race for second place. Front Range CrossFit who needs a good showing here badly. In lane number, uh, Front Range CrossFit is in lane number seven. But we've got CrossFit Verb in lane number two. Connect 
Once again, those judges keeping them on us, making sure that they start again where they stop the previously. athlete from front range. Look at that male. He's using a much less secure grip. He's going that I dream a genie style hold. That doesn't keep the bar up there as steady. He's really fighting. His wrist must be uh, uh, worn out. His shoulders must be worn out from those shoulder to hold. He looks like he's going to power through here. But they are. They have pulled the head of CrossFit Verb. And like I say, they do need this win here. And they need to get second place in this workout as Jeff across the finish line. She's got to step on that mat. And an unofficial time, 9 minutes, 28 seconds. We still have a race for third place. Look at that. They're going stride for stride. That's the second team from Bird in the blue shirt. Now, remember, what matters is when their female gets on the mat, not necessarily when the male does. When the female gets on the mat is when the workout is over. So it's up to the females now, and CrossFit Verbs female will cross the finish line ahead of they must both be on the mat Duke All Stars. So unofficial time: 10 minutes 56 seconds for CrossFit Verb, and it looks like, ooh, wow, he's going to get on that mat. The teams are finishing fast, and it is all about jumping on that mat as quickly as you can. And man, that's a photo finish too close to call from our standpoint. That CrossFit the club, she had a little more awareness that she needed to get on that mat. Yeah. And back on the field, this walking lunge is taking its toll on MBS Black. Mind, body, soul, CrossFit in the blue shirt and black shorts. You know, teammates like, giving each other encouragement, saying, hey, get that bar up there and let's go. Like, like, how check much time here. do we have to go? There is your event winner, and there is second place, Front Range CrossFit. So they will earn two points and help their standing on the leaderboard. MBS CrossFit on the right, blue t-shirt. In lane number eight, CrossFit Utah Valley with the black t-shirts have a slight lead, but they can't let that bar rest on the ground. <laughs> Members, they're not just competing within their heat, so don't just look around and see where others are. Several teams had good finishes in the second heat. They're competing with them for those uh, for those places and those points. So you got to get that bar on your shoulders. You got to go. And we talked about it a little bit before, but just what is it that the judge is looking for there? So the back knee must touch the mound as he stands up. That lead leg must remain stable until the second uh, second step is finished. And making sure that his entire body is past that line. He can step on the mat, like you said, really counts when the female steps on that mat. So this is CrossFit Utah Valley as she finishes her workout. Step up. 12 minutes, 56 seconds. There's a 15 minute time cap, so these teams still have two minutes left in this workout. And these guys have to come back and do another workout later on today that will involve every team member. Here we go. We got an interesting race here. They're looking over to each other. Who's going to pick up that bar first? And then can you make one final effort? Can you just say, I'm going to get to that finish line no matter what. I'm not setting this bar down. That's the gut check that these athletes are trying to make right now. This is Red Rocks CrossFit in the black t-shirt, red shorts with the male. He's going to cross the finish line, step on the mat and the female portion of their team will cross the finish line with an unofficial time. Got to wait till she steps on the mat. He's got to move that weight first. And there she goes, 13 minutes and 46 seconds unofficial time. Man, that, to be able to see that finish line, probably almost turns into a mirage at one point in the workout. This is MBS Black. The legs are wobbly, the shoulders are burning. Yeah, don't forget all the work that those shoulders have done previously in this workout. It all adds up. MBS Black as they step on their mat. One team of, left. Matter of pride, trying to get there before the end of the time cap. Yep, one left. Which to do it, they still have about half of the, the court that they've got to cross here. I can tell you, no matter how hard the workout is, no matter what the time cap is, athletes hate getting what they consider a DNF. Everyone wants to make it underneath that uh, time cap. And the crowd is pushing them through. And the crowd gets it. excited almost for the yeah. last finisher as they do for the first. It's all about effort. She is closing in on the last 10 seconds. Can she do it? 
Seven seconds left. She's got to cross that finish line, but she also has to step on the mat. And she does it with two seconds left. And the crowd likes that effort. Great effort. Great job. Like you said, it does, it's not just about competing against the other teams in this heat. It's also about competing against the other teams that have already taken place. So they've got to know what those times are. And let's go down to Clay. He is on the competition floor. Justin, thank you so much. I'm standing here with Michael and Taylor. Hacks back you. You guys are dominating the field here. Michael, did you stick to the uh, event plan? Not exactly. Our shoulders were a lot more tired than we than we planned for, but we saw the uh, the time that New England got, and immediately I said, that's amazing. We need to try to beat that. So we knew we had to do some big sets on the handstand push-ups, and it just took more out of us than we than we had planned, and then we had done in practice. So very good. And Taylor, I know you said you couldn't talk much. Yes. One question. How about the possibility of two teams from Ute CrossFit going to the games? Oh yeah, so we're going for it. So we've been gunning for it. So. What's it like to train with those two teams out there? Awesome. It's just unbelievable. The camaraderie we have. Everyone's working hard. When you have, you know, 11 other people around you trying to accomplish the same things, it makes it a lot easier to perform. Very good. Back to you, Justin Hatchback. You rocking and rolling here in the Southwest. Thanks, Clay, and uh, congratulations once again. They've made it six for six. That will conclude our coverage of the team competition for event number six. For Josh Everett, I'm Justin Judkins. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back with more action later on.